Wait, how many methods are we doing? Ow! Oh! Is that blood? Hi everyone, I'm Sophia Panich, and this is almost every way to remove your leg hair. Can I back out of this yet? If you're somebody who chooses to remove their leg hair, there are so many different ways to do it. We picked 21 methods, and then I waited another two weeks to see how my hair grew back. Yeah, some of these are a little out there, but in the name of beauty, I wanted to try out as many as possible. Shaving. This is a straight razor, and when you think about this going near your legs, it's terrifying. If you're going for that straight out of the 1920s vibe when you shave your legs, then this is for you. The slightly less intense version of this would be the safety razor, which has a blade guard and two cutting edges. These things are ridiculously sharp. That's not going on my legs. The biggest benefit of a safety razor is that it's so economical. You buy what is often a stainless steel handle. You buy that once and you've got it for life. A pack of 100 razor blades is $10, but they can be tricky to use. You need some practice to get the technique down, so you're not supposed to press down or drag. If you do that with this, you will cut yourself, <laughs> which I did. But I have to say, this shave was very smooth. It was a little too smooth. Disposable razors are great because they're cheap and they're readily available. You can literally find them anywhere. But the downside is they only have two blades. They don't usually have a lubrication strip. They don't have an ergonomical handle and the head of the razor doesn't bend. It makes it really hard to go over the curves and bumps of your legs without cutting or nicking yourself. Disposables are great if you forget your razor while traveling and don't want to spend a lot of money, but I personally wouldn't use them on a regular basis. Plus, they're pretty wasteful when it comes to the environment. Many steps up from the disposable razor is the cartridge razor. These are specifically made with leg shaving in mind. The multiple blades on the razor are angled to capture every hair on the first pass, and the razor heads are often spring-mounted so that they adjust to the contours of your legs. Downside of cartridge razors is they can be expensive. A pack of four or five can run you anywhere from $20 to $30. But yeah, it's pretty ridiculous, but I'd rather shave my legs quick and easy with no cuts when I'm rushing in the morning then walk out with bloody legs. So this is a fancy looking electric razor, but it still has the rotating heads that have little blades that spin around, catch your hair, and cut it off. You can shave dry, so you don't need any water, shaving cream, you can just shave and go. The downside of an electric razor is it's just another thing you have to plug in or charge or use batteries for, which I can never find. I don't think I get a close enough shave with an electric razor, but that's just me. Epilator. Basically, an epilator is a bunch of tweezers that roll around your legs and yank out your hair. Hmm. Okay. You know, there's a lot that's good about the epilator. It leaves your legs super smooth, but it just hurts way too much for me. The discomfort experience in the beginning will decrease considerably with repeated use as the skin adapts to the process. <laughs> no. All right, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> so, according to dermatologists, you could potentially see some, not much, hair reduction over time if you epilate regularly. <laughs> Epilating is mechanically pulling the hair out, and sometimes as you do that over and over again, oh you'll God. disfigure the hair bulb. And so that I'm hair so bulb sorry. may scar down and not produce any hair anymore. <laughs> Who would do this to themselves? My friend does her bikini area. I don't know how she does it. Is that blood? Okay, no, I'm done. <laughs> Next up, depilatories. It's a lot sexier than it was in the 90s. I first tried a depilatory cream when I was trying to hide from my parents the fact that I was trying to remove my leg hair. Depilatories are, are painless. You put it on, you leave it on for three to seven minutes, depending on what the packaging says, and it dissolves your hair away. Depilatories can be messy, smelly. Oh! Yeah, there it is. And they can be irritating. So my advice with depilatory creams is always do a patch test first to see if it's going to irritate your skin or not. This is a spray option that came with a, a scraper. It's kind of like an ice scraper for your legs. Between the two options, the spray actually left behind a little bit of stubble, whereas the cream left my leg completely smooth. Depilatory creams are dissolving the hair at the surface. It's not going into your hair follicle and dissolving and killing the hair follicle. It's not that strong. So it's going to grow back just as fast as you would shaving. Duct tape. So apparently there are people out there using duct tape to remove their leg hair. They're mostly viral challenges, but seriously, there's nothing in the world that you could do to convince me to use it on my own legs. Yeah, we're not doing this. Sugaring. 
So sugaring is very similar to waxing. I find it doesn't hurt as much. My skin reacts to things like hot wax. So when I find a method that doesn't cause a lot of irritation, I stick with it. And that's why I've stuck with sugaring for so long. Because it's just this mixture of sugar, lemon, and water, whatever's left on your skin dissolves away easily. So cleanup is a breeze. For me, sugaring has all the benefits of waxing. It's just less painful and for me causes less irritation afterwards. This kit comes with denim strips that you can actually wash and reuse. So that's really nice because it means that you're not creating a lot of waste. Sugaring does tend to be a little bit more expensive than waxing. So a place that does both might wax your legs for $50 and sugar your legs for 55. So it's not a huge difference, but it can add up. Tweezing is a method of hair removal. I don't think it's a viable method of removing all of your leg hair. If you're tweezing your whole leg, you are a masochist. But remember those tough curved spots around your ankle that the razor might have trouble with? Well, tweezing is a great solution to get rid of those. I'm calling this next category abrasives. Spoiler alert, they hurt. This is a depilation sponge. Do not be fooled by its cute packaging. You wet your skin, then you rub this vigorously in circular motions, and yeah, it, it takes off your hair, but it also seemed to take off three layers of my skin. I get it, you don't use any product or, or blade, but actually, no, I don't get it. Sorry. <laughs> this cute little thing is apparently called a hair mitten. Similarly, you rub this on your hair and it's supposed to remove it, but it really just reminded me of wrapping sandpaper around my hand and rubbing my leg. That feels weird. So this is a pumice stone, and apparently people use it to remove leg hair. I don't know who came up with this idea. Like people do this? But using a pumice stone to remove your leg hair, in my opinion, is not a good option. I had definite abrasions after this the next day. It reminds me of the time that my best friend's dad gave her a sanding block to exfoliate her feet. Is this from a hardware store? And she wondered why she had cuts all over her feet. I am not rubbing my skin with this, I'm sorry. With all the other methods we've covered, I will happily stick to shaving or waxing. I would definitely epilate over the abrasives. Probably just have a couple glasses of wine before I did it. <laughs> Maybe tequila. Let's talk about waxing. There's a lot to cover here, literally. With any waxing technique, the hair needs to be at least a quarter inch long if it's fine, half inch long if it's thick. However long that takes, you're gonna have to be in that awkward stubble growth phase. Soft wax is probably the wax that people are most familiar with. It's the type that you spread on your leg, you cover with a fabric strip, you rub the fabric strip, and you rip it off. When you're waxing, you need to make sure to apply the wax downwards as the hair grows and rip it up in the opposite direction. Soft wax is great because it covers large surfaces at once. It can be painful depending on your skin and hair type and it can cause irritation, especially if you have sensitive skin. This is hard wax and it actually starts out as these little wax pellets that then get melted down. Hard wax, it's a wax that hardens on your skin. You don't use strips. It's a quick and efficient way to remove your leg hair because you can cover large surfaces at once. Hard wax, I think, creates less of a mess than soft wax because you don't need any fabric strips. And a lot of people find hard wax to be less painful than soft wax and gentler on the skin, provided it's not too hot or spread too thick. If you wanna reduce the pain, if you're really sensitive to waxing, you could take an Advil or a Tylenol an hour before. While numbing cream like Lanocaine or other topical anesthetics can somewhat numb the pain, it's not recommended. You might not be able to tell if the wax is too hot. Hard wax tends to grab coarser hairs better than soft wax does, and it is gentler on your skin. Pre-made wax strips are really great in theory. They are way less messy than having to spread the wax on with a wooden stick. They're not hot, but they are way more painful than any other form of waxing that I've tried. Ow! Ah. <laughs> oh, this is hard to watch. And you know what? I found that it sometimes didn't cling to all the hairs and the hairs break in half. In some instances, you're not ripping the hair out at the root. Cold wax is another type of wax, but you guessed it, you use it cold. Cold wax is a little less messy because the wax isn't hot and runny. There's no chance of burning yourself, so that's a big plus. But getting cold wax out of the tub is really hard. It wasn't as painful as the hot wax. It was less messy, and I didn't get any irritation afterwards. Oh, 
With cold wax, it's harder to get a super clean, smooth result. Heated wax tends to soften the follicles so the hairs pull out more easily. Cold wax doesn't heat the hair follicles, so it's going to take more effort to rip those hairs out. This cold wax was great. It's very similar to sugaring, but just struggling with it to get out of the jar was a hassle. Laser hair removal. There are three types of lasers that are used in laser hair removal, the diode, the alexandrite, and the NDAG. And the one that you see in at-home devices is the diode. Unlock the device by holding the skin sensor against the skin in, you, in the area you wish to treat. They work by shooting heat down into the follicle. That increase in temperature either shuts down the follicle completely or causes a long delay in the growth phase, after which the follicle will produce a hair that's thinner and lighter. A lot of dermatologists actually recommend at-home diodes as a follow-up to in-office procedures. So maybe you go for a couple sessions and then you follow up regularly with your own at-home diode. I'm feeling it. But they are pricey. That's the problem. The newer versions can run between $350 and $450. You may not see great results if you have really thick hair. Thick hair in general, whether you're in office or using an at-home device, it's harder to reduce because there's a lot more of it and there's more pigment. At-home lasers are about 30 to 50% weaker than an in-office laser, so you don't hurt yourself, basically. Ow! <laughs> no, it didn't hurt that bad. I just wasn't expecting it. Which means you have to use them more frequently. So this all begs the question, what is it like to get an in-office laser treatment? The laser that doctors use in office is a lot bigger, a lot more complicated, and a lot more powerful than the ones that they sell you for home use. Which is also why you need to put on these really chic glasses. You ready? Yeah. Okay. You wanna shave the hair so that the laser doesn't start targeting the hair on the surface of your skin, which can cause burning. We decided not to use numbing cream because we didn't want to add to the length of the treatment. In office are higher powered, quicker, and more effective, and they're the best option for people who want near permanent hair removal. Almost done. They're more expensive than a lot of options and require a pretty large time commitment. You okay? Yep. It can range anywhere from six months to a year. It's like you get used to it after a while. Oh, not that one. And we're done. <laughs> There are also different types of lasers now that can be used for light skin and dark skin, but regardless of your skin tone, you absolutely cannot have a tan or have a lot of time in the sun because those tanning cells will get targeted by the laser and cause damage and it can be very painful and cause permanent damage to your skin. Okay, back to the studio. At Home Intense Pulse Light, or IPL. IPL is a really distant relative of lasers, and like lasers, it also uses heat to injure the hair's root. You're going to be seeing about 30 to 50% reduction of hair with either device, whereas in office, you're going to be seeing about 50 to 80%. After reading these instructions, I'm actually more nervous than before I opened it up, especially because there's something called gentle mode. At home, IPL devices are actually a really great, safe method of hair reduction. They have built in safety features, so if the skin is too dark, it won't fire. You probably are gonna have to use this for three to six weeks regularly to start seeing any sort of reduction. However, it also depends on how thick your hair is. The thicker your hair is, the less effective it's gonna be. An IPL device also will not work for light hair. Since it covers bigger areas at a time, it's faster to use than a diode laser, so you could probably do both legs in about 10 to 20 minutes. Let's take a look at a couple DIY home remedies. I was really skeptical about these. This DIY remedy involves half a tablespoon of corn flour, one egg white, and one tablespoon of sugar, mixing it, applying it to your leg, let it dry, and when you peel it off, it's supposed to remove your leg hair. But as you can see, it was kind of just a runny mess. There's no way this is gonna work. At Allure, we tend to stay away from at-home remedies. You never know how they're gonna work out. With so many other methods, it's better to just stick to some of the more traditional ones. The hat did nothing. This DIY method involves mixing two tablespoons of milk with one tablespoon of gelatin. Microwave it for 15 seconds. You smear it on. Once it dries, you pull it up just like wax. Oh, it smells funky. This method really reminded me just of wax. It looked like wax. It dried like wax. I think if I had left it on for longer and on an area, like a flatter area, it may have worked a little better. It did pull out some hairs, but not a ton. It got three hairs. But it was fun to play with. So the big question after trying all these methods is, how did the hair grow back? 
Two weeks later, my hair still hasn't grown back from the wax. It'll probably be one more week until you see any sort of regrowth. Oh, an epilator shows the same results as waxing because it's doing the same thing. It's removing the hair at the root. The abrasives clearly didn't work, as you can see from the scabs and lots of hair left over. Any of the shaving methods end up with the same regrowth results because you're cutting the hair at the surface, it's all gonna look the same when it grows back but you'll also see the injuries that came from the disposable razor and the safety razor. Those cuts, they might be small, but they're mighty. They hurt and they'll last for a while. The depilatory looked similar to the regrowth of shaving because again, you're doing a similar thing. You're removing the hair at the surface. That myth about hair growing back darker or thicker after shaving or waxing is just not true. You're not changing the actual makeup of the hair. So nothing's going to change about how it grows back. It really comes down to what you want and what method works best for you. Do you want to reduce the amount of hair? If so, use a laser. If you just want to remove it temporarily, waxing or shaving works. If you prefer epilating and it doesn't hurt you, great. <laughs> But if you can't stand it and you wanna use a depilatory and it doesn't aggravate your skin, that's fine too. There are so many different ways you can remove leg hair and not every method's going to be right for you. So I say take what we've learned here and experiment. See what you like and remember, no one's saying you have to remove your leg hair. If you wanna let it grow, let it grow. It's certainly going to be the least painful method of them all.